Hello, audience. My name is Justin Brighthop. This week we're going to be talking about a quick rundown of posts put on distrolist.org. It is 06-11-2013. This is the first episode of the distrolist.org review. So let's give you a quick rundown on what happened. We've got some great volunteers that posted uh, great content on this website. So we got the re latest release is Q Litu, I believe it's pronounced, um, Raring Ringtail. And uh, basically it is a friendly and fast Linux operating system based on Lubuntu. Uh, despite its lightweight, it gives about 10 megabytes of RAM less than Lubuntu. It offers a number of advanced uh, components like QX Hub, rapid access features similar to Ubuntu Dash, the several desktop environments, LXDE, default interface recommended for beginners. Similar to Ubuntu with a choice of three different layouts. Default Mac OS X and laptop. Um, exciting uh, Qlitu Jazz, a more sophisticated interface similar to Bode Linux Enlightenment and uh, cue the kids. Now, I'm not a big fan of Bode Linux. I tried it out. I don't like the interface. I don't like you can't copy and paste very easy or anything like that. Um, quickly transform an old PC into a fun educational tool for kids. Now, that I like. You know, it's a lightweight Linux distribution. I like that part. Okay. This was all written by Waves of the Future. And um, I haven't seen any other reviews yet or comments on this post because it just got put up today. Um, people have commented on other ones, and we'll go into that because we've gotten other reviews from other people, so that's important. Um, so a quick look at uh, their YouTube video. you got the YouTube video link right there, so you can check it out and see what it looks like, all the fun stuff. Um, they got a little screenshot up here we can check out. Um, I don't know what it means because it's not the interface. It's just like a quick little rundown of the system. we got... Um, and the speed comparison between Lubuntu and uh, this system. This is their homepage, what it looks like. Um, so, lightweight can be leading edge. I, I don't really like the website. Sorry, not a fan of it. Um, we've got Waves of the Future, present website, wavesofthefuture.net. Uh, release no details are right here on the same page. We got uh, downloads um, and we got, uh, I guess it's all on the same page. The website, it looks like he's got some interesting ads there on his site. But uh, anyway, um, we got screenshots. That's what you're probably more interested in. And then there's the YouTube video. So we're gonna look at the screenshots real quick. Um, my gosh, look at that one. I guess we can preview them all here, maybe. So we got this one, and this one. We got a few little screenshots here going on. Anyway, that is that distribution. And it's listed on distrolist.org. I'm very thankful that he posted it. I hope people are a good fan of it. We'll get some reviews from you guys, some comments. Tell me what you think. I think he needs to improve his website. I mean, it's probably an improvement over my old website, but, you know. Anyway. Um, we got the Instant Web Kiosk 9.0, published on June 2nd, 2013. Now, distrolist.org, I have to tell you, it's got some distributions listed, some newer ones, that are not listed on distrolist.com. Um, or And some of them aren't listed on linux.com, it's by the website. So we got some unique distributions here that are new, that are not being listed anywhere. So subscribe to this page and check it out every week. You got us on Facebook, too. So Instant Kiosk. Uh, web kiosk. We got the uh, instant web kiosk is a suite of free, refined, live, no installation required. Boot is performed from USB keys. Browser only. Only a browser interface will show up. Operating systems based on Linux, Debian, designed for use in web kiosk, multi-user workstations, cafes, offices, schools, hotels, secure and private personal internet browsing, and digital uh, signage deployments. The instant web kiosk flavors. It has a couple different, a couple different revisions they've released. Um, one of them is instant 
web kiosk UB uh, unrestricted browsing. Another one is easy digital signage designed for digital uh, signage. So those are two, and we'll go into those in just a minute. All right, so I'm kind of looking at this the first time myself. Um, the difference between the instant web kiosk uh, unrestricted browsing and the uh, easy digital signage is, um, well, let's read the uh, first one. The unrestricted browsing um, uses secure personal browsing. It's fully customizable. Um, for internet browsing purposes, which protects your privacy, users can change its settings, but after uh, reset, the operating system defaults to original values, set the persistent settings, network localization, video, sound, and home page uh, configurations persist across reboots, and users' information are completely destroyed. Closing browser window also resets the system. In a less secure but quicker manner, it makes use of Google Chromium as a default internet browser and it features audio support and video files, Adobe Flash, PDF images, viewing office files, compressed files, uh, support it will feature features full uh, I18N integration including CJ input methods. Um, so basically the one thing that means that's really cool is that um, if you have office documents you're trying to open or whatever in this they'll open probably in the browser. So it's kinda cool. Um, so I'm looking through that. Let's keep going down. We got our other version, which is the, and they have separate home pages, evidently. The EDS version of the web kiosk, instant web, instant web kiosk, as it's called. Uh, easy digital signage designed for digital signage installations. Uh, full screen view lock navigation, restrict to the page specified. No way to stop it or escape this view, but reboot it by, by rebooting the machine. After reset, the operating system defaults to original values except for persistent settings. Um, let's see, it's full HTML5 support, Firefox, Chrome view, W Flash support, um, very useful on screen virtual keyboard. So I'm guessing the digital signage, if I could guess, is like an ad or something that's on there um, that you see to get on the internet or maybe a logo or something like that. So I was kind of wondering. Um, so here's another one that made it to the web page and this one has had reviews on it and people have said stuff about it on Google Plus and other sites this is uh, Calamary OS 2.3 build uh, 2.38 uh, June 1st 2013 there's a bunch of pictures here of it and uh, I guess you could probably go through and see all of these pictures by hitting next or whatever here but um, this is this is sort of what the interface looks like. Um, it's it's basically for like an appliance at home, like DVR type thing or something where you can watch all your media. It's an uh, awesome SUS Studio um, appliance designed for everyday computing. It needs as a built-in firewall to keep you and your data safe. App Armor is built in for an extra layer of security. Users can use the online update application. To install important security system updates, Clamera OS has a web browser, email application, music player, special application called Play on Linux, and more. Play on Linux makes it easy to run Windows software on Linux. Clamera OS uses the uh, Cinnamon desktop environment, a beautiful, fluid desktop, to make working as productive as possible. Clamera OS uses a much lighter desktop kernel. The kernel has features disabled that are not used on normal computers, making the system faster. Clamera OS it's also configured by default to have a lower swappiness value, improving multitasking performance on PCs with more memory. This distribution release is based on OpenSUSE 12.2. The distribution release works on 64-bit PCs, so it's designed for PCs with lots of RAM. Um, here's the thing I have to say about this. All right, I'm just going to tell you because this is what I got back. I've not tested this myself, um, but I'm going to tell you there are people that saw this post on distrolist.org. They tested it out, they downloaded it, and they said it's still beta, and they said that it does have some issues. Now, um, this sounds very familiar to another distribution that uses the same interface, which is the Mate, or the, I'm sorry, not Mate distribution, there's no Mate distribution I know of, the Mint, Linux Mint 15, Olivia. Um, I've heard the same things about it, and 
But before we get to that, let's get to React OS. React OS, um, I did a video on it. It's released 05-30-2013. It's a big deal. Now you can see this uh, video, my review of this on um, another site of mine. I did this uh, post. I did not. Um, I copied it from somewhere else. Put it on here from the React OS site. So um, I didn't badmouth this on the distrolist.org page. I'm not going to badmouth people's distributions on the page. Um, the video, I might tell you what they've had to say about it, but I'm going to try my best not to badmouth um, distributions because I know how hard it is to get listed in the first place. I don't want to discourage people um, from listing on this site by thinking I'm just going to give things a bad review if they suck. And, and Well, I'm, I'm just going to say in the video, React OS is still like an alpha or beta, I think alpha, and they're working really hard on it. They're doing a really good job. But you can't even get to the internet yet on the release that I tried on this release. I couldn't even get to the internet. So, you know, I couldn't install a web browser. There was no web browser included. I downloaded three different versions of it. I downloaded the boot CD, the live CD, and the virtual um, machine image. And install all of them. And I could not get them to work right. So I got blue screens. I got all kinds of fun stuff. So let's go through here. React OS. He's been in development for years. I even know a friend who's worked on it. And a new release is a rare thing. Um, submitted by Z98 on Thursday, 05 30, 2013, 1725. The React OS project is proud to announce to release of version 0315, a culmination of over a year of development. 0315 incorporates several architectural enhancements to create more compatible and conformant implementation of NT architecture. This is not a Linux distribution. According to the people that wrote reviews on this, this is an NT kernel that is made by them. It is not made by Microsoft. Um, perhaps the most user uh, visible enhancement is the initial support for USB devices with storage and input. It does, what was I going to say about it? Um, NT kernel, but it uses Wine. Somehow it uses Wine software. That's what I was told. So, um, so infrastructure-wise, this is the first release of React OS using CMake instead of Rebuild or Rbuild. Um, the conversion to CMake has allowed developers to generate Visual Studio solutions for working on the code through several C++ components still need work before support for Microsoft uh, tool chain is complete. The importance of 0315 is not just its release, but what it promises. Feedback from testers helping with the finalizing the release of provided a host of data developers use to fix a wide range of issues. This is often said that each release should be better than its predecessor. It certainly fulfills that criteria, but also prom promises much better for the future. Some highlights of this release as follows. Generate support for USB mice, keyboard, and storage devices. Evidently, it didn't have USB support before. A rewritten session management subsystem, uh, alternate React OS memory management module has taken over all memory management responsibilities except for sections. AHCI support with updated Uni ATA driver, uh, preliminary support for debugging React OS components using WinDBG, improvements based off results from the auto hotkey application functionality test suite, bug fixes based off running driver verification fire on several uh, bundled drivers. In addition, the packages traditionally provided by the release, there is an additional image of hybrid CD used at the Linux Tag Expo to showcase React OS. Maybe it actually works. Um, this image incorporates some additional USB uh, related fixes to allow for more robust utilization and detection of devices along with enabling the uh, lattice theme by default. Please note that theme support is still incomplete and the use of uh, Lattice in the Linux Tag Hybrid CD was primarily for showcase purposes and is not yet ready for general use. A detailed changelog is also available on ReactOS website, downloads, and for those of you who don't know what ReactOS is, you can click that link there. Video review of this release. I believe that's my video review. I'm sorry, but it does not look good for ReactOS, although I think they're doing a good job. Linux Mint Olivia released May 29, 2013. All right, now they did not post this, so I posted it because this was before people started posting their own distributions to this site, so I posted this. Um, I was going to tell you, uh, you can read about it. 
I'm not going to go into it because it's a long and boring video probably. But the thing is, is that Linux Mint 15 Olivia is supposed to have this awesome interface that everybody loves called Cinnamon Interface. Oh yeah, Cinnamon Desktop, right? And it sucks. Why? Because according to users, I haven't used it, I don't know anything about it, but according to users that have used the Cinnamon Desktop, they said it doesn't work. It's like beta. It just freezes and locks up and gives them problems and does all kinds of fun things. So minutes, Linux Mint lovers, I'm sorry. If you want to do a good review for this, do it. Go to distrolist.org. Click on the thing. Write about it. Tell me that it works. Because everyone that I've talked to about it so far has told me that it does not work right. Um, that, and I've also gotten lots of reviews from my J Linux. Let's look it down here. We put a Debian Weezy 7, May 4th, 2013. We put that on there. But the J Linux OS um, also down here. And then a welcome to DistroList. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the J Linux OS that I have listed on here. Um, according to most users, it runs faster and installs faster than Linux Mint. Yes. And they've also told me that um, it runs faster and does way better than Ubuntu. They say it's just screaming fast compared to Ubuntu. It's stable. It's reliable. It has an easy to use in desktop interface. Now, I can tell you a couple negative things. Why? Because I just ran down some other distributions. So let me run down my own for a minute. Okay? I forgot to include a printer icon in the main desktop. You can go to the other desktops in JLinux and copy it over if you want, but I forgot to put that in there. Um, I have a release on SourceForge that tells you how to fix it. Um, it's, a, it's a, like a um, news thing. Um, there was a couple little things. Um, I could have included some more security and uninstalled some, uh, some, a couple little software things that I think could be used to exploit the system possibly. Uh, but other people say that those things aren't any kind of issue, that they have no security exploitation factors at all. Um, so everybody's telling me it's great. Nobody has complained about the printer button not being there. I don't know why. Um, apparently people aren't printing with it. But uh, I had it set up for somebody the other day, an old man, and uh, the printer button was not there. So I thought it was embarrassing. And I thought, man, everybody's got a copy of JLinux Linux doesn't have a printer button. You know, so, uh, man, i got to put that in there, a printer's button. So something to think about. Um, so anyways, I hope you like distrolist.org. I hope we get more people posting on it. This isn't just for distributors. This is also for users. You subscribe to it. Now if a user wants to submit a distribution release, you can do that. You don't have to be a distributor to, to put a post on here about a project or distribution. And it's not just for Linux distributions. There's also software projects that people do on SourceForge.net and stuff. And, and you can put those on here if you like. You can you can put anything you want on here. Now, uh, the only thing, like somebody else said, is Ubuntu Satanic Edition is not going to make it to this list. It's not anything with Satanic symbols in it. not going to make it to this list. So, anyways, you must like, comment, share, and subscribe to this. You will, you will go there. You will go to distrolist.org. You will subscribe to it. You will go on Facebook and go to distrolist.org on Facebook. And you will like and, and, and subscribe to that. And you will go to me on Twitter at USA Computer Tech. And you will like and subscribe to me there. And you will go on Google Plus. And you will go on all the open source uh, social media sites. And you will go on Dick.com. And you will go stumble upon. And you're going to find me. And you're going to subscribe. Because you must. Because I have control of you. Oh. Because I'm in pr with PRISM with the government. No, I'm just kidding. So I have control. And you will do what I say. No. Anyways, it doesn't work like that. But like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have fun and enjoy this website. There are tons of people going to it. It's getting lots of web traffic. So 